Hello and welcome to Ace Fairy Tales with Elizabeth. This is a short series to link in with my forthcoming book, Asexual Fairy Tales, which has been crowdfunded on Kickstarter and is coming out from Silverwood Books later in the year. If you haven't watched the first uh, video in the series, which is about the glass coffin, you can go back and watch that because the second one does link in with it. And this one is about a story that I've called The Half Marble Prince. Now this story goes by many names. It is known variously as the Ensorcelled Prince, the King of the Ebony Isles, the Young King of the Black Isles, the Enchanted Prince and even the Semi-Petrified Prince. But I've decided to go with the Half Marble Prince for my retelling since I think that probably explains it the best for my readership. I don't actually have a hard copy of the book, um, of any of the books that it's in, and there are obviously a number of versions of it again. The main version of it is in The Thousand and One Nights, also known as The Arabian Nights Entertainment, which I said I don't have my own copy of. The copy of it that I um, am using is a digital copy, um, which I can put a link to. Um, I do have a beautiful copy of a very similar book. Uh, this is Tales of the Marvelous and News of the Strange, which is a very similar type of book um, to the Arabian Nights, and some of the stories of the Nights are also contained in this book. So I thought I'd just have something to show you that's from the same culture, even though the story um, of the Half Marble Prince isn't in this. Although there is another story involving a glass coffin in this one, even though it's nothing like our glass coffin story. Um, the version um, of the Knights, the Knights is, has a very complicated history of translation. It was kind of neglected in its native Arabia for quite a long time and then was taken up by European translators and became very popular in Europe before it became popular again in the Middle East as it now is, um, has become more popular and become more important to uh, Muslim culture, in particular for Muslim science fiction writers uh, and things like that. Um, this is just a printout. <laughs> you can see all my underlinings of it. It's from the Sacred Texts website, I said I'll link that. Um, and this is from the um, Richard Burton translation, not the actor Richard Burton, who is a sort of explorer, one of those, uh, one of those <laughs> British Empire type of people. Um, and that's very sort of for all the problems um, with his translation. Um, Robert Irwin, who's an expert on the night, who I've seen a few times uh, at talks, still thinks it's the most sort of scholarly version of the nights that there is. Um, but I also, I think I first encountered it through another book, which I also don't have because I borrowed it from my local library and got a big up our local libraries. It was actually from a book called Crystal Legends by Moira Caldicott. A little printout. Um, yes, a legal to print out. Just the few pages. Don't worry, I've checked. Um, this is in my local library. Her Bradford Libraries is still there. Is there anyone from Bradford? Or oh, you want to borrow it through interlibrary loans, Crystal Legends. Um, and I think, again, um, like with the glass coffin, it's probably the retelling has probably maybe influenced me a little bit more than the original. There's also a version of this which I didn't really use, which is again by our old friend Andrew Lang. Um, he did an Arabian Nights um, Entertainment's version where he calls it the Young King of the Black Isles, where his version is so short and truncated because it's taken out all the sex references to make it suitable for children, so it almost doesn't make sense anymore. Um, but there is, there is that version of it as well. Now I call this story the masculine version of the glass coffin because they have a lot of the similar motifs in them and I haven't seen any other fairy tale that follows this exact set of motifs. So if you know of any, please do tell me because these seem to be the only two that mirror each other in this way. Um, again, like the glass coffin, it starts with an outsider figure, um, this time it's a sultan who um, 
encounters some very strange fish of different colours that someone brings to him and tries to cook and all sorts of weird marvels happen which makes him think there's something a bit weird about these fish and he gets taken to the lake um, from where the fish were caught and uh, this leads the Sultan to going off exploring by himself without his entourage um, goes into a cave again a bit like the glass coffin encounters an imprisoned person like in the glass coffin uh, but this time it's a man it's a prince or a king and he has been made marble from the waist downwards and I think we can probably see the the ace symbolism in that um, and we found out this has been done to him by his wife because he wasn't sleeping with her and she was going off with a lover but he was still jealous of the lover, tried to fight against um, them, tried to kill the lover, but the wife was a witch and enchanted him. She turned him after marble, made his kingdom into a little islands in the lake, made his subjects into the fish of four colours. So we got the same um, image as in the glass coffin, the person and their lands being enchanted um, and held and sort of miniaturised in this way um, and also a sort of a sexual um, enchanter or enchantress that has done this um, to the person. Um, so it is actually the Sultan that ultimately frees the Prince from the enchantments and he goes back to live with the Sultan, the Sultan becomes a sort of father figure to him and yeah there are versions where he gets married um, but again I stuck with the version where he's just happy to go and live as a son to the Sultan not having to be married, not having to engage in anything he doesn't want to engage in. So that's a very brief look at the Half Marble Prince, I didn't want to give away too many spoilers for the book, but you will find that the themes of statues and marble and caves and these sort of things crop up again and again in some of the other stories as well. It does seem to be, to me, a particularly a set of symbols. So I don't know if you think that, I'd be interested to know what you do think, I'd be interested to know if you're enjoying this. Um, Again, leave a comment and I will link all the stories and I've mentioned all the versions and stuff in the box below. And I'll see you next week. Bye.